Hi everyone, David Hatch here. I'm a leadership coach and business owner based in the UK. Thanks for joining us and if you're new to the channel then welcome. In today's video we'll be talking about the four major mistakes made by new managers and leaders in small businesses and scale-ups. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about four of the biggest leadership mistakes made by new managers and leaders who are working in small and medium businesses and how you can avoid these as a new leader yourself. This is the latest in a series of content I'm doing about leadership and management and you can check out some of the other videos on the channel's homepage and visit our website to learn more. All right, so let's make a start then. So these four things are things that you want to avoid as you're leading your company, your organization, or your team, but they're not in any order of importance or anything like that. In fact, I'd say they're probably equally important. Number one is micromanaging. There are a few things worse at work than when you're under a deadline or you're just trying to have a productive day and you have this feeling of someone looking over your shoulder all day. It's awful for concentration, especially when your manager is literally standing over you watching you work. But the reason why this is such a mistake for a leader manager to make goes deeper than the surface issue of just breaking someone's concentration. If you're managing by directly supervising every single task and critiquing every element of people's work, no matter how small or how trivial it is, and even if you're only doing this some of the time or for certain tasks and not others, or with certain people and not others, the message you're sending by doing all of this is loud and clear to everyone in your team, not just to the person you're micromanaging. And it's this, you don't trust them to do their jobs. So there is a compound issue here of both the practical element where you're distracting someone from their work and the wider psychological, or cultural and mindset issue that you're sending a really quite toxic signal to the team. Trust your hiring and your HR processes to give you capable team members and then trust them to do their jobs. Even if you think they're underperforming, having you stand over them is not going to solve that problem. Number two is taking an autocratic or command and control style approach to leadership. Micromanagement that we just talked about is certainly a part of this, but there are a long list of features associated with this type of leadership that can be truly detrimental in a business setting. But for me at least, the biggest problems with taking this kind of approach are that it centralises all decision making into a single leader, whilst at the same time actively discouraging or even punishing feedback or initiative or inputs from the wider team. And this is simply not an effective way to lead in the majority of circumstances. Taking this approach in a business setting is not the way to build rapport, trust, engagement, or even a basic level of interest from your team members. At its worst, it can result in some really negative outcomes for all involved and ultimately for the company itself. So pick an approach to leadership that will focus on feedback, collaboration, communication, a more modern style of leadership, and you'll be best equipped to lead your team to success. Mistake number three is trying to set yourself apart as different or outside of the team. In this respect, there is a tricky balance to strike as a leader or manager between being able to set the direction and drive performance on the one hand, 
and being credible and trusted and respected on the other. Setting yourself too far apart from the team or failing to take an interest in the people that you're managing, acting absent empathy or support or otherwise allowing your ego to drive your workplace behaviour can only really get in the way of your ability to lead people or to manage your team. So you've got to be able to demonstrate that you're in the muck too, working alongside everyone else to achieve the same goal and supporting them when challenges arise, not just swooping in to take the glory when they've succeeded. Take responsibility, not credit. Finally, this mistake is kind of two-sided. It's really to do with how the leader reacts to opposite outcomes. On one side, the big mistake is to try to use fear of punishment or failure as a tool for motivation and reacting negatively when things go wrong. And then on the other side, it's equally damaging if you're failing to recognise the contributions of others, or even worse, if you're taking credit for others' work. Acknowledge good work publicly and recognise the team member who produces it and thank them for it as well. Don't take the credit for yourself. When things go wrong, accept and take responsibility as the leader or manager, but also deal with this privately or one-to-one with your team and do so in a supportive way. Work with people to understand what went wrong and why and then help them produce a plan to correct it and avoid it going wrong again in the future. It's a tough life to be responsible, but the best way to lead is take blame for failure, but not credit for success. This is another key behaviour where you can relatively easily build respect and rapport with the people you're leading. But if you get it wrong, then you can just as easily lose all credibility in your organisation and struggle to get any support from your team. So a quick recap then of what we've talked about in this video four of the major mistakes made by leaders, particularly in small businesses and startups. Firstly is micromanaging, which can have all sorts of negative effects on a team. Secondly is taking an autocratic approach to leadership. It's out of date, it doesn't work as well as it used to, and in a modern workplace and a business setting, it's just not appropriate anymore. Thirdly is separating yourself from the team or trying to stand apart from them. You do have to walk a fine line here, but it is important to be seen as part of the team. And finally, taking credit, particularly for the work of others, but generally for the success of your team, you need to share that credit around and make sure the people who put the effort in are the ones who are recognised for it. And at the same time, it's also really important that the leader takes responsibility when things go wrong. So remember, take the blame, but don't hog the credit. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. I hope that's because you found it interesting or relevant. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, please do hit the like button or leave a comment and let me know your own thoughts and experiences on the subject. You can also subscribe to the channel to get notified when I post the next video. I'll be doing one video a week on a similar leadership management business subject. So I hope you'll join me again. And finally, if you found what I've said to be helpful or if any of it has resonated with you, then I do provide online coaching and training for new managers or leaders. You'll find some links in the description underneath this video, um, so you can click on those and find out a bit more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. And remember, be a leader, not a boss.